You're excited, aren't you? Because meiosis two is essentially mitosis with half the chromosomes. So the reduction division has happened. We now, if I were to draw a picture of what we have at this stage in the game, you can imagine that we've got one big chromosome. It has sister chromatids, but there's only one of them and maybe one little chromosome. There's only one of them. And where is its homolog? Sweet things. The homolog is in a whole other cell. Here's its homolog. And here's its other homolog. And it's in a, an entirely different cell. This is the cell. Both of these are going to go through meiosis two. Now, prophase. Sometimes when the cell goes through a little baby interphase, sometimes the chromatin will re-unravel. Re excuse me. Sometimes the chromosomes will unravel and turn into chromatin again. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it goes directly from telophase and cytokinesis in meiosis one into prophase of meiosis two. So prophase two, if we don't have everything condensed, we condense it. If we made a nuclear envelope, we dissolve it. If we have a nucleolus, we undo it. But sometimes all that stuff is already done. So then you end up, here we are. Let's go ahead and throw in our spindles and our centrioles. And we're going to do some jockeying. And we're going to line everybody up where? On the metaphase plate. So metaphase two, my chromosomes, my sister chromatids, line up on the metaphase plate. Do you see how if this were mitosis, we would have our homologs, actually, all of these guys would be in one cell lining up. If it were meiosis one, these guys would all be in one cell and my homologs would be hooked up so that they can separate. But this is meiosis two. So we only have one, it's a haploid cell, but we only line, everybody lines up in a line. Nobody is partnered up with anybody except for the sister chromatid. Anaphase two, we just make sure that sisters are splitting. And telophase two, sisters make it to the poles. We're going to go ahead and build a new nuclear envelope. We have a new nucleus. Let's go through cytokinesis. End result is a, well, four little, uh, I can do it. I really can. Gametes. There they are. These are my end gamete results. And that was my meiosis too. Got to have a spermy tail. Straightforward, isn't it? Okay, we're going to, why? Why do we do this? There are some parts of meiosis. Number one, it gets us a haploid chromosome number. But number two, there are things that are happening in meiosis that promote genetic diversity. So we're going to look at those things. For one, we have the process of crossing over. Let's look at that more closely. For two, and you can actually see that, rat, rat, her, we actually have a process called independent assortment that is significant for producing genetic diversity. And then if you start thinking about, whoa, how many possible sperm are there and how many possible eggs are there? And then how many possible babies can you make? Holy random fertilization madness of fun times and uh, diversity. I'll be right back and let's talk about crossing over.